Hell yeah, guys, thank you so much uh, to accept the invitation to be uh, on our Quebec radio show, Prescription Punk Rock. Guys, I'm going to introduce yourself. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm Neil from Panic Problem. And I'm Tom from Panic Problem. Hello. Neil, Tom, welcome to Prescription Punk Rock. Uh, guys, so much happened uh, till the beginning. I'm so proud of what you guys achieved. Uh, but for people in Quebec City that maybe never heard about that project, uh, how it started up? How you guys started up? Sure, man. Um, so Tom and Jeff and myself and all uh, previous punk bands for probably the past uh, 20 to 30 years. And um, we've all toured all over uh, the, the continent and the world. And past, say, about 10 years, I was diagnosed with um, a cognitive mood disorder called general anxiety disorder. And I went through a lot of therapy. And during that process, uh, one of the biggest things that was really important to me was kind of falling in love again with punk and how helpful it was to, um, to my mental health. So I wanted to start a band uh, that really focused on mental health and mental health awareness and make all of the songs about being nuts. <laughs> so I called Tom, <laughs> and Tom was into it. He was like, yeah, let's get nuts together and be a crazy team. And uh, we added Jeff, and here we are now. It's really tough right now for everybody, and it's certainly really tough for people. Um, and you kind of have like a whole spectrum of people, right? You've got people that maybe they were living stress-free lives, and now they are stressed, or you were dealing with you know, something that you had never really sought treatment before, or maybe there's something that was undiagnosed or undealt with, and it's all just bringing that to the surface. Or maybe you're just a hot mess like me, and this is just kind of part of waking up every day is something like this. This is not supposed to happen, and we will all get through this, you know? And it, it, it's really tough right now, and so... I mean, anybody that's suffering right now, you know, if you can hear my voice, you're not alone. Um, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, care about you and want you to be okay, and we are all in this together, and we are all going to make, you know, we're going to get through this crap. It's gonna, we will get through it. Think, but we're going to get through it. Damn right. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think people are definitely going to want to come to more uh, shows. <laughs> I think I think people are going to want to go and hit the bars pretty hard when this is all done. <laughs> well, actually, that's kind of what happened with this album. Uh, obviously, we didn't plan the timing around this, uh, but uh, our album release show was supposed to be March 13th here in Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. Playing with uh, Dave House and the Mermaid and the Explosion, and uh, it was going to be a great show. Almost sold out. Uh, probably yeah. would have sold out, and we'll then, walk up you know, that, yeah. yeah, and then only uh, only a few days leading up to it, you know, the venue had to shut down. You know, everything shut down in town, and you know, obviously, yeah, eventually I, I the states and everywhere. So you know, we're we were so excited to play this music for everybody and release this record, um, but you know, whatever, you know, we're just adapting like everyone else, and we're just happy that we could put it out um, digitally. And uh, start promoting it, you know, on radio and on the internet, yeah. and you know, just helping people try to get through this. With you know, hey, we we have a, a pop punk record that centers around mental health issues and trying to stay positive and get through life. So seems like pretty good timing in a weird way. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, it hits the fans to so buckle up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is punk rock time, man. This is this is it. You know, this is uh. You know, this is what we uh, we all listen to records for. Like, uh, what was it? Like Henry Rollins said that or something. This is punk rock time. You know, so yep. I mean, it's definitely uh, it's definitely been a trial, and it's certainly uh, weird times we're all living in right now. But I think one of the coolest things about punk and community around it and everything like that is, is we do have a network of people. Um, you know, folks like yourself that doing cool radio shows. People are doing cool podcasts, um, you know, internet message boards, and you know, um, Facebook groups and things like that. That are just kind of all finding ways to stay connected and find, you know, community and friendship and you know, stuff 
instead of just like you know freaking out in a room by yourself <laughs> yeah I'm, i'm just I'm, am i alone living you know that no you know you're not alone a lot of people got i mean that's really flattering i mean you know thank you that's really cool i mean you know i think i hope more than anything if, if people hear this stuff you know it would just be really cool if people could just talk about these things a bit more honestly and um more openly i, I think so often you know there's people that are right next to us and they're probably going through a lot of stuff and if we only knew or had an idea of what they were going through you know we could reach out in some kind of constructive way and help out and and if nothing else you know what if nothing else sometimes just a good night out with your friends um even if you're doing it remotely like tom and i've been doing having our our uh, our video uh our, our virtual drinking you know which is great <laughs> <laughs> which i i really look forward to um you know however we got to do it right now it, it's gonna be all right you know we're we're still got each other we still got you know we got punk rock man that record that record was so cool when that came out i remember uh didn't like wasn't like uh uh noam chomsky didn't like noam chomsky or somebody do like liner notes in that record there were like essays there were essays in the liner notes of that record it was so cool i remember getting a hold of that i was in like uh my freshman or sophomore year of college when that record came out and like it was just so righteous i love that record that's a great that's a great record man underground network so cool yeah it's cool i mean like we've got a lot of friends that run record stores around the country and you know we're all trying to support them as best we can or there's independent artists that are out there um that are doing some really cool stuff uh with either apparel right now trying to donate to local businesses or um donating their art to, you know, just trying to help sustain everything. Um, there's a, there's something that's happening in the States right now that's really cool where um, a lot of independent music video, uh, or excuse me, a lot of independent music halls and music venues are getting together and we're all trying to work together to, you know, keep all of that open and running so that when this all wraps up, we, we all still have really, you know, positive and safe spaces to play in and um I, I, it's really rewarding and cool to your point you know to just see everybody working in this grassroots sort of way and just kind of cutting out all of the middle people and just saying you know hey person you know what is it that you need from the community to make it another day or another week or you know another month and that person can say it and you know sometimes we don't hit the mark sometimes we miss but a lot of times you know as a community we are making it happen or we're exceeding it you know and more than anything that just gives me so much hope right now it's so cool to um to just see everybody banding together it feels like the uh like the rebels from star wars or something cool like that it's just really cool <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, in a way, I think there was, there's a huge waking up. People are way more open mind mentally about a lot of things. I mean, like the environment, uh, I mean, feminism, yeah. and I mean, like, there's a lot of actions. That, that's maybe the difference than maybe in the 90s, where we're just talking quietly about it. Now there's actions happening everywhere in the world. But with that virus and everything, I think it's, I don't know, it's gonna maybe bring more people together or the voice gonna be louder. But yeah, I think we're, we're gonna reach another level and the new generations are ready, you know, our kids. Um, <clears throat> it's not like us. We were in the middle generation. Maybe our parents didn't care yeah. about that. We didn't care that much, but still we know it's there or we care a little bit, but our kids care and that's, that's going to be the change. And I think that we're going to care way more than we never did uh, back in our lives. So it's a beautiful thing. As, as like an older punk, you know, like how can you, you know, how can you support the, the younger, the younger punk 
the get out there, the younger rabble rousers out there, without like necessarily like getting in their way or or trying to like tone control like what they're what they're doing and going through. And you know, I think sometimes you know, for for more established bands, you know, what 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 we can all do is you know help take um, you know newer and younger. Um, bands out on the road to make sure that people are seeing, you know, really cool, fresh, fresh messages and fresh takes on older messages. And, um, you know, for, or for bands that are starting kind of, you know, out or, or starting again, kind of like how Tom and Jeff and I are, where, you know, we, we were in other bands and now we're doing this one. So, it's, you know, it's kind of, kind of new, but we've kind of done this, done it before and, I think the other thing that we can all do is we can also listen. You know, we can we can take that moment and try to help these younger people that have experienced, you know, new takes on things to help them, you know, have their voice and, you know, amplify that voice so that, you know, th- that they are validated. Not that they need us for validation. They don't. You know, they, they can validate themselves, but they can be... You know, there there can be a vindication. There can be a an agreement, a a uh, an understanding that yes, what they are experiencing is valid. You know, and um, I really hope that that's something that we can do as a band is is uh, or just you know forget the band for a second, just as people. You know, just just to see what some of these younger people are going through and and saying, you know, I see you, I see what you're what you're going through, and you know, how can I help? You know. Yeah, I've always wanted to check that out with all of your beautiful bridges and everything, and I'm, I am uh, very envious. Plus, you guys have a fantastic food culture, which I'm, I'm dying to, to check out. So, but I've, I've been all over Canada. I've been all yeah. over Canada, but I, I particularly love uh, Quebec. I, I have, uh, I have been lucky enough to uh, visit and play in Quebec City many moons ago. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was, I don't know, probably like 97, 1997, 98, some, somewhere around there. Uh, it was with my old band, uh, The Smooth Sphere, on tour with, uh, speaking of Anti-Flag, we were on tour with Anti-Flag, and no use for a name. Was this and the Smash Mouth tour? No, that was, that was way later. But, uh, that, was not, that was 98. Yeah. No, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I think, I think in my parents' house, in New York, uh, they have a framed poster from that show. I can't remember what venue we were at, but uh, it was awesome, man. That, that was, as a band, our first uh, run through Canada, and it was fucking great, man. I, I love going up there. I, I love Canada in general. It really was. I mean, just it was one of those things where, like, in the States, we were playing smaller venues, probably, you know, three to 500 people. And then we got up to Canada, and we were playing, like, 1,000 to 2,000 place person venues, and they were selling out every night. And the Canadian kids were just going off, and it was, like, amazing. I, I was, uh, after our first show, I was all like, I want to come to, I want to move to Canada and play here yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's better hygiene up there. Like, there's, there's, just, there's just real perks. There's real perks, you know. I I I adore I adore Canada. I played I did one run through Canada with, with my first band that you know really got out of town and I uh, and I had a real a, a, a really weird run in in Toronto and I had to like run down Queen Street with like a grip of cash and jump into a moving van. <laughs> oh, you were in Toronto. That was Toronto. Yeah, I mean, no kidding, man. I gotta tell you, it was real. It was real sketchy. But like, I remember the crazy thing was, is like that. That was actually the moment where my parents started becoming like proud of me of doing this. Like, wow. They were like, "Oh, he's playing in another country. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, I guess this isn't a phase. You know." <laughs> Here I am, like twenty years later, you know, and it's it's not a phase. It's, it's, this is never going away. It's, uh, <laughs> it's in your it's, blood, it's, man. Like it's a, it's, like it's, it's you know. 
Your vein yeah, pumping the music. It's an aquarium <laughs> train. This is the best perfect go train I've ever done in my life. This is amazing. Yes, done. I, I, this time, next time I go to Baltimore, I will not try the Greyhound bus trip. It was a nightmare. Oh, that's a weird yeah, part of town. I don't, don't recommend don't, it. Don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> just call, just call, call us, and we'll we'll get you to the right part of town. You guys are amazing. I will for sure. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, thank that'd you. be great. Thank you. Perfect. Cheers. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank All right, you. Guys, take it easy. Have a good day. Bye-bye.